So what is up YouTube? Dave here with KickFam. Uh, today I'm actually going to bring you something a little different on our, uh, on our channel here. And it is going to be called The Neighborhood Spotlight. Which is going to be a new series here on the channel. And it's mainly going to be for my uh, followers and subscribers from the, uh, from the Philadelphia area. Um, as you know, I am from Philadelphia, and Philadelphia is the city of neighborhoods. So, what I'm going to do in this new series is spotlight different things throughout the city from different neighborhoods. Um, so, I am going to go ahead and call the series the neighborhood, the neighborhood Spotlight. So, today, actually, the spotlight is going to be on none other than the youth sports organization that I volunteer at called the Leprechauns, the Port Richmond Leprechauns, which is based here in Port in the Port Richmond section of Philadelphia. Um, today, we're actually going to go over to their to the clubhouse. Uh, we're going to meet the we're going to meet the director of football, and uh, we're going to sit down and talk to him about the upcoming football season and important dates that are coming up. And also let you get to know the organization a little bit better. Um, I feel that this the neighborhood and the city has kind of lost touch of what's going on inside of it. And uh, all the great things that the city has to offer. So this is a way for me to spotlight those things. And for you, my followers and subscribers, to get to know a few things that are going on in your neighborhood or in the city around you so remember if you like this video hit that thumbs up if you're new to the channel and you want to see more stuff like this subscribe hit that bell so you can so you can stay in in touch of what's going on and uh let's go ahead and get out of here let's get let's get over to the clubhouse let's meet up with uh the football director um which his name is mike trout and uh, let's go ahead and put the neighborhood spotlight on the Port Richmond Leprechauns today. Cons Clubhouse, which is actually located at 2973 Gall Street, which if you're in the Port Richmond area of the Philadelphia, it is located at the intersection of Gall and Ann across the street from Cahox Playground, where the Leprechauns use the football field and the basketball court for their uh, youth pro youth sports programs so let's go ahead get in here and visit with uh the football director and let's see uh what they got going on So was it recorded? Yeah, it's recorded. Oh, all right. <laughs> so, so uh, we're actually going to start the first episode of Neighborhood Spotlight with uh, the Le Port Richmond Leprechauns, and we have Mike Trout here, who is the football director for uh, the Port Richmond Leprechauns. So, I got a few questions 
Um, remember, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Hit that thumbs up if you like this video. And put comments down below. So let's go ahead and get into it. So, uh, Mike, tell me a little bit about the Port Richmond Leprechauns. Uh, well, Port Richmond Leprechaun's been in the neighborhood uh, since 1965. About 1965? Yeah, 62, 65. About 62-65. Yeah. Uh, they've been providing sports in the kids' neighborhood since then. Um, I started here back in 1989, played till about 1997. Uh, we started a football camp uh, about four years ago um, to bring all the neighborhood kids out, work with the local high schools. Uh, most of our kids are, are free uh, for the camp, um, and then they have to pay to play during the league. Um, <laughs> Uh, what do you feel are our core values here here at the club? Uh, the core values, I would think, would be a lot of the people in charge that are running of it. Um, a lot of our guys are retired military veterans, uh, our president all the way to our vice president. Um, their kids are in the neighborhood. They're also guys from the neighborhood. I would say the core values is the community, and we all care about the kids in our community. Okay. What is uh, What do you feel is our approach as a club while we teach the game of football to the youth of the rich? It's just, it's just not teaching a game of football. Um, we all love football, but it's also teaching them character, um, leadership, um, to have passion with something. And with our neighborhood, the struggles that are going on, we try to keep them off the street as much as possible. Cool, cool. Uh, what drives you to work with the kids and, uh, as, a, as, a, as a coach? As a coach and what drives me is when... You get a kid from our neighborhood that gets into a great high school, and then, and then he gets to play ball in high school for a great coach, and then he gets into a, a great college with a scholarship. That's our main goal here, I would say, is, is to get these kids in the right directions, get a great education, and to teach a football. So do you see a difference between being a mentor and a coach? Not really. I think a coach is a mentor um, in all different aspects. Uh, it's the father on the field uh, for at least two hours a day, and could be four to six hours on a Saturday. Okay, um, so we're actually getting ready to go into the 2019 football season here. Yes. Uh, which 2018 was a great season. Yes. Uh, we put two championships into the organization, yes. first time since the 60s. Yeah, about since the organization started, I believe. So, um, how do you plan on communicating the plans of our of our uh, club and communication with the parents this coming up season? A lot of it is, is what, how we teach the game of football. Um, the safety factors, um, concussions are a big thing in football. Mothers don't even allow a lot of their kids to play it nowadays, but we provide the number two helmet in the country for safety against concussions. Um, we want to have a lot of parent-to-parent -parent, um, communication, uh, teaching what we're going to teach their kids. Um, we will have courses where we will sit down with the parent and explain to them uh, the safety of the game, um, what we're going to be teaching their kids. We're also going to teach them that we're going to be one of the people that are going to push their kid as hard as he's ever been pushed in his life. So okay. what's your what's your, uh, what's your your expectation for a parent for sure? Uh, we'll just come out here and support their child, um, support the organization as best as they can. Um, the more parent involvement we could get, the, the better it helps the organization. Um, and most of our parents are community people. Okay. So what do you think is the proper role for a parent in our program then? Uh, well, it could be different. Um, we do have some parents that are coaches. Um, we are going to our second year of our booster club. Um, that would be something great, um, helping us fundraise for the kids. We, we are a little on the low end of the poor community. Uh, a lot of kids struggle paying, um, going out there helping us, getting these kids on the field just as much as we do. Okay. Now, as you know, we're in, this, we're in the, I guess you'd call the inner city. Yes. So... How are you, how do you think us as a club will deal with discipline in parents and kids this year on major issues and minor issues? Well, so they've got to be on the same page with the parent as well as the coach. Um, every kid is raised different at their home, and, I mean, every parent runs something different. Uh, but if we get on that same board with the parent and tell them how we're going to teach these kids and they're understanding how we're going to teach these kids, Maybe it could help them also going going into teaching kids. We do have a lot of younger parents out there. Um, I was a young parent myself, raising two boys. Um, no, there's not a book written how to be a parent. Yeah. Um, but as a parent, I have involved my kids in sports their whole life, um, and just being a parent and getting your kid out there—that's the first step of of being involved in it. So the biggest concern during a football season from parents and kids is their playing time. How are you going to? 
talk to the parents and kids about that? Well, we have to also explain. Uh, most of our teams run at two levels. Uh, well, two ages, I should say. We have uh, like a 5-6 instructional. We have 7-8. We have 9-10. We have 11-12. We have a 13-14 U, U we have put together for kids that uh, ain't ready for high school yet. So we have to explain to these parents that if they're on that 8-9-10, eight, eight, uh, sorry, 8-17, that 7-year-old is a lot less ex inexperienced than the 8-year-old. So that 8-year-old that played before gets a little bit more time. Um, we do get the kids on the field um, as much as possible. Um, we have other coaches that keep track of playing time for all players and make sure they get on the field with football as well as our basketball organization. Um, but one thing is safety. I, I never want to put a kid out there that is very inexperienced yet and could get himself hurt. Uh, most of it is if a kid's not getting that amount of playing time, he's just not ready yet. Um, if any kid's ready in this organization, I guarantee he'll be on that field. So our age groups go up to 14 you. Uh, we obviously want to turn our club into a feeder program. Yes. How do you think we're going to do that this year? And what high schools do you see us feeding our kids into? I've already seen um, a lot of our kids getting fed into high schools. Uh, two years ago, we have a, a kid named Jake. He, as a freshman, he started center at varsity at Frankfurt. Over at Mass Bomb, we have two kids now as freshmen moving through their sophomore year. Um, we have another one from last year that's moving in. He got accepted to Mass Bomb. We're also trying to feed our Kensington. So these are the high schools that we invite out to our, our, our football camp for the kids. So they can also see the kids in the neighborhood, see their talents, and say, you know what? I want that kid to come and play for my organization. Awesome. Now, we said that we're getting ready for the 2019 football season. Yes. Uh, basically, off-season program starts in Omaha. Uh, so what what, uh, what do we have coming up? Any important dates or anything? Well, the off-season for the kids starts in a month, but for the coaches, we started about, uh, I would say, two months ago. Um, we sit and we plan and we have our coaches meet. And um, we do have our first day of camp coming up would be April 30th. And then we go into May 2nd and May 3rd. They're all about 6.30 to about 7.30, 7.45. Um, we have local high schools coming out to work with the kids. Uh, kids get a free T-shirt when they come out. We usually better have 150 to 200 kids out on the field. Okay. Uh, so we also have our sports banquet coming up. Yes. April 6th. Yes. Uh, tickets are on sale. Um, so just look up our Facebook page. I'll put all that info down below. Uh, so... We also have, the, like you said, the camp coming up. Um, we're mainly looking for fundraising. Yes. So what do you think we could do to get more fundraising in-house, Par either with parents or outside organizations? Um, it's tough. When I was a kid, we had a carnival here, and now it's tough to even get permits, permits for that. That funded a lot of our sports programs. Um, what we are going to do for the first year, we're going to try is running a beef and beer. Um, after our camp, we'll sell some tickets at the Beef and Beer, and hopefully this helps our football program moving forward with fundraising. Um, but we definitely do need some sponsors. Uh, me and the president went out last year, and we went to all the uh, neighborhood businesses, and they helped out as much as they could last year, um, all up and down Allegheny Ave, up into Richmond, and all they helped us out a lot this year, well, mm -hmm. this past season, our championship season. And the president is none other than Bill Stahl. Bill Stahl, yes. uh, The one and only. If you want to get in touch with Bill Stahl, his information is on the Facebook page. He is the main contact for all tickets for the banquet. Um, we will be starting open sign-ups for football. Yes, we, I believe we started started now. Okay. Um, basketball just ended. We had two teams make it to the championships. Did not win it. Great Run, we're runner-ups, but they were both games. Um, so... If you want to get involved in the Leprechauns organization, just reach out to us. Uh, we're here. We're going to start probably being here at least once a week. Yes. This yeah. starting from today on out. Yeah. Um, I'll put all the phone numbers, all the information in below. I'll also put it down here at the bottom of the screen. Um, other than that, thanks for coming on. Thank and, you. And uh, this was Neighborhood Spotlight with the Kick Fam. We'll see you on the next one.
in there. So that's in the back. That was in the back room, I guess. That's all. Is it, or is it in the uh, That's Scottish, but okay. Remember when Eddie broke the Scottish home part? Yeah. I don't know. I thought bag places were Scottish.